Hey, how you doing? Mr. H here. As we start to come to a close in Unit 6, and we're getting ready for that big redemption quiz that you're going to nail because you've been training instead of just trying, um, we're going to do a little compare and contrast here to make sure we don't get ourselves into trouble moving ahead. One of the issues people seem to have once we get done with Section 8.6 is, when do I have fractions at the end of my answers? When do I not? Okay, and so there's a little bit different of a process that we're going to work through here. So we're going to take a look at a couple of these. I'm not going to do all of them because, well, then they would leave you nothing to do. And what fun is that? So on this first one, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to do both. So when we talk about 8.5, when we are just trying to simplify, when we're adding or subtracting, I notice the big difference here is, this side has an equals, this side doesn't. I mean, that's that's the biggest difference here. When there's equals, we're trying to solve something. When there's not equals, we're just trying to simplify, okay? So really, this is a case of simplify versus solve, okay? So here, I've got a common denominator already. Still gotta put, do my due diligence and put my parentheses in here. But I already have a common denominator. So I go ahead, I keep the common denominator, and then I just combine my like terms, and I see this is a minus 2x. We've talked about that before. 3x minus 2x is x plus 1. Again, it's parentheses, so they'd have to be identical for me to be able to take something out. And since I can't do that, well then, I don't. That's as far as that goes. My fraction is still there unless something happened to cancel once I simplify. If you take the same problem now, but you stick an equals on the right side, like we do here, okay, I still need to have a common denominator. Now here, we always talked about with any of these problems, if something's not a fraction, we're going to make it a fraction by putting it over 1. And we found out in doing 1a, hey, these are the same. So my LCD, my LCM, whichever term I want to use here, is x plus 5. If you want to include the 1, you can, but the 1 really doesn't change anything, so I normally don't do that. And so if you think back here, well, very recently, within the last couple of days, to, okay, so what do I do? Well, this LCM, we're going to multiply it times each one of these terms in here. And we spoke about when we were doing this section that you've got to figure out what's comfortable for you as far as this goes. Some of you may literally want to write out the x plus 5 over 1 and literally write out and look at every single one of these so you can physically cancel things out and see what's left. And some of the rest of you can look at this and go, okay, well, if I look at my first term here, so I'm distributing this through. What happens? The x plus 5s cancel, and I'm left with 3x plus 1. If you can visually do that, either with your fingers or something like that, that's probably going to be the easiest way, and it's probably going to save you the most time. So as I keep working, I go to the next one. I'm like, same situation. The x plus 5s cancel, and the 2x is left. Just don't forget that the minus is there. But then we get to our last term. Like, Hardy, nothing cancels. Like, the x plus 5 doesn't cancel. Yeah. Okay. So if it doesn't cancel, just multiply them together. Because 1 times 1 is 1, so there's really no fraction here anymore. So it's really just doing the 4 times x plus 5. But this time now, since the equals is there, I'm just going to do my Algebra 1 stuff. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to solve this. So since these are on the same side of the equals, don't do opposites to get them together. 3 minus 2 is 1, or just x plus 1. Over here, we got to distribute. I'm going to swing around to here because I'm going to try to stay in the lines here and be a good person. Minus x minus x. So 1 equals 3x plus 20 minus the 20 over. And divide... I three. Now, one thing, I have to admit it, I forgot something. Not that it's critical. It doesn't change the fact of what answer I got. 
But you've got to remember in your solve side, okay, after we've knocked out the denominators, we still have to make sure this answer is actually legit still. And if I think about that for a minute, remember my excluded values, was taking that LCM, setting it to not equal zero, because division by zero is undefined, we can't do that. And we find out that our excluded value for this one would be negative five, but I didn't get negative five, so I'm fine. If that would have been negative five though, that would have been wrong and I just said no solution, okay? Because I wouldn't have had any answers that work. Okay, I'm trying to look through here and see where is going to be our biggest issue? Or maybe I just need to bounce back and forth. Trying to see which one is going to be the most helpful in building. Oh, all these decisions to make. Okay, I'm going to go with... Man. You're like, Hardy, just make a decision. This isn't the end of the world. I mean, it's true. All right, I'm going to do 3B. I'm going to do 3B. Because so I think that's where the biggest issue is going to come. Even though I am going to chat LCM with you on the others. Okay. So actually, let's do that. Let's, let's chat LCM on these and go from there. So if I'm looking at my least common multiple or my least common denominator, number two. Okay. Remember our checklist. Oh, the checklist. I'm going to get out my mini checklist because it fits the screen better. We look at coefficients. Okay. So if I'm looking at either of these, let's say we're looking at this one. Okay, only looking at denominators here. Coefficients, okay, these each have a five, so five, okay. Single exponents, we take the biggest one through an LCD. When we're factoring its smallest, LCD is gonna be the biggest. So the biggest exponent I see in one of those is x squared. And I don't see any parentheses. So my LCD slash LCM for these two is gonna be five x squared. Build my fractions, cancel my denominators, my business okay when I get to three so I get here to three and I go okay I'm gonna do 3a on this one because again sometimes I think people find these to actually be easier because I'm just wiping stuff out and here I got to build so let's let's build so let's go through our checklist okay common denominator do I have any just in the denominator here any constant terms, any coefficients that I deal with? No. Okay, that four is stuck in parentheses. Do I have any single variables? Yes. X. Okay. Do I have any sets of parentheses? Yes. X plus four. Okay. So that gets me set down here. So now, whatever was already there is there. And now it becomes our game that we talked about before of what's missing. So I compare. Got the x plus 4. What didn't I check off? Whatever didn't get checked off, x belongs in the numerator. Okay. And I do the same thing on the second fraction. What do I have? I have the x. Check it. What did I not check off? x plus 4. And just one other quick thing, since this one happens to be a minus, I wouldn't have to do this with plus. Since this is a minus and I want to make sure that negative distributes through, I'm going to put that there and change that. So that's, that's the trickiest part of when you're dealing with keep the common denominator, keep the fraction. Okay? It's getting there because we don't want to cancel stuff yet. Don't do it. We don't cancel until we're down to one fraction that's simplified. So here... All right, let's see what we got here. We got negative 2x minus 8. So let's do some like terms here. 5 minus 2 is 3x minus 8. Can I factor this? No. Can I simplify it? Can I take anything out of it? No. I'm done. Don't cancel stuff. Don't set it equal to 0. If there's no equals. You're building fractions. You're simplifying the numerator. You're done. Okay. Now, when you get to 3B, your common denominator will be the same, but you're going to be using that to multiply and wipe things out. OK, 
Okay. All right. Oh, let's take a peek here. Number four, we'll we'll get a we'll get some things set up here. So let's see. Four. What's our LCM or our LCD going to be? Ooh. If you're going through your denominator. And you happen to notice something might be factorable. You should be attempting to factor it. Because it may make your life easier with these. All pluses, that's always nice. Multiplies to 10 and adds to 7 is 5 and 2. Okay. Pretty easy on this one to see what our, our common denominator or our common multiple is going to be. Everything's in parentheses, so no coefficients, no single variables. Our LCM for this one is going to be x plus 2x plus 5. And so like we did up in number 1, that's going to go on the outside. And we're just going to go through and say, hey, what cancels will these do? So then I got 6x plus 5 left. And then I get to the second fraction. I go, ooh, everything cancels. Okay, so I don't need to add anything to my 3x. I'm just going to leave 3x there. And when I get to my last one, the x plus 5s cancel. So I'd have equals 5 x plus 2. When you're doing the ones on the right, the knockout denominators, you should have zero fractions left once you multiply through by the LCM. If you still have something left in the denominator, our LCM had a problem somewhere. Okay. Whereas on this side, once we build our fractions, we just got to make sure we're not canceling stuff too soon. Like we can't be up in this one and start canceling these back in this step then we end up right back where we started. It's like we just kind of went in a circle. We don't want to go in a circle. We want to get across the finish line here. Okay. That's where I'm going to give it a stop here because I think you can get some good practice through the rest. But this is another one of those great situations. If you're having issues on one of the other ones, okay, if you're trying to see, you know, how did this go? You know, did I do this right? Did I do that right? Shoot me a, send me a picture. You know, jump in if you're doing this ahead of time. Jump in during one of our meets and be like, hey, I'm ahead a little bit. I did the compare contrast 8586. What's up with 2A? You know, what am I missing here? And let's work through it some, but I want to give you a chance, every chance I can here at the end, to do some paper and pencil stuff with this before you get to the redemption quiz. So you can like nail that and ace it and be like proud of yourself and your grade is like going whoop. And then you're like, okay, okay, this, this isn't so bad. So stay in touch with me. If you need help, let's keep working. Otherwise, keep at it. Keep training. Keep training. Not trying. Trying, we can quit. Training, we're just, we're going to keep going until we get to the goal. See you next time.